Yo, what's up guys, it's Corpo1912, and welcome beginners to World of Tanks. So, in this video I'm going to be telling you guys what's the best tanks to go for, depending on your playstyle, and what are the smart things to do, and what not to do when starting off. Now, I want to welcome you guys to World of Tanks, which is an amazing game, where it has an amazing community, and make sure to go check out other content creators on YouTube like Sins, The Beard Guys, and Easy Breezy on Twitch. Now, with that said, um, what is the best tank to go for? Well, like I always say, there's no such thing as a bad tank. You know, there's always such thing as somebody who's not as skilled with a certain tank. So, I have friends that say, don't go for that tank, it's bad. No, if you want to go for that tank, go ahead, go for it. You don't have to listen to me. I'm just here for, you know, it's my own opinion and many others that I've collected. So, hopefully you guys do enjoy this. Now, with that said, what is the best heavy tank? And what is a heavy tank? Well, a heavy tank is... Well, you guys are stupid. You know what a heavy tank is. Self-explanatory. It's heavy. It's got a lot of armor, moves slow and maneuverable but has a big gun to help it so if you guys want to be the heavy brawler right up at the front supporting your team doing lots of damage and having people support you to cover your sides and stuff then you're gold so what is the best one well i would suggest going down the russian heavy tanks given this is a pretty beginner friendly tank line along with the british heavy tanks uh, but they're not necessarily uh, beginner friendly when they get up into higher tiers. Russians are pretty much beginner friendly throughout the whole line. Uh, depend, it doesn't really matter which tier 10 you go for, each one is heavily armored and is amazing. But the KV-1 is amazing because it gets a one. you have the option to get a 122 at tier 5, which if you guys don't know, that's a really big gun for a tier 5. And... Um, basically you have a crap ton of armor so you don't need to worry much now what is the best light tank aka scout well that's pretty easy it's the elc this is the french light tank line which i would suggest you guys go for if you are interested in fast moving vehicles Especially ones with big guns and fast fire rates. So, let's say you you want a mix of all. You want a good amount of armor, a good decent gun with a decent reload, and decent speed. That would be your typical medium tank. Now, what is a good medium tank to go for? Well, medium tanks are different in this game. You'll see and come to find that each medium tank has a slightly different playstyle, which is the same with all tanks. But what is the most friendly towards beginners? Well, there's always the American mediums, such as the M4 or the EZ8, which EZ8 is personally my favorite tier 6 medium. That's my opinion, of course, but I believe that it's the most good friendly given it has a pretty good amount of armor and i mean hey it's the tank from the movie fury guys let's go for that and um yeah so that's a really good option now let's say you want to sit back deal a lot of damage and you're a patient player like you play like you're canadian well the artillery is for you now what are the best artilleries well this all depends on what you want to do. If you want to do a crap ton of damage, the Americans are it. If you want accurate guns, the British, eh, they're accurate at the beginning, really accurate, I mean. Uh, but in the end, at tier 10, it's the Russians that come in with the most accurate tier 10. So, good choice is the Russian artillery piece or the British. Now the British does a lot of splash at tier 10, so it means you don't have to really worry about missing because you'll splash and do somewhat damage. Suggested to fire at large groups of tanks. Now, 
uh, let's say you want to be, you know, you want to be the sneaky little sniper shooting people from the ridge and not taking any damage in return. Well, that's called your tank destroyer. Now, let's say you don't want to sit back but still do a lot of damage. Well, don't worry, buddy. You'll be able to go down the American tank destroyer line, which is pretty decent. I mean, the T-95 is amazing if you want to go, I don't know, make yourself some chicken noodle soup while you're approaching the enemy. So all you got to do is put on cruise control and drive towards them. But uh, let's say you want to have a good amount of damage and a decent fire rate. Well, the object 268 is amazing. It's the Russian tier 10 tank destroyer and it has a 152 millimeter gun with a 13 second reload. Now, it's the second highest penetrating gun in the game, aside from the Jack Panzer E100, which is another good choice. Heavily armored, 21 second reload, but gets, I believe, a 170 millimeter gun. Do make sure to check it if you really want the accurate stats. That's I don't own the tank, so I wouldn't know the exact stats, but I believe it's to 170 millimeter gun. So it's another good choice. Now let's say you want to get, you you know, you want to piss off everyone in the match, and uh, you want to get all that hate mail, that that amazing hate mail. Well, don't you worry. There's something called the nickname the Death Star or the FV three two five one five B. It's it's the British tank destroyer tier ten. It's both of them have a 183. Uh, just, I just call it the Death Star because it's easier to say. And it destroys planets. You know, pretty good. Pretty good. So, uh, that out of the way. What are the smart things to do and what is not smart to do at the beginning of the game? Well, you know, maybe you just started the game, you got your little tier one down, got them fully upgraded, and you think, you think you're ready for the big boys. So you get yourself the coolest looking tier eight, that, in your opinion. You just scroll through all of them, don't care, don't look at the stats. All you want is the most badass looking tank on the battlefield, that's right. No, no, don't do that, okay? What I would suggest doing is, in the beginning, uh, just make sure that you reach certain tiers, like tier 5 premiums are good starters. They make decent money for the tier. So, you know, you don't really need a tier 8 until you actually get to tier 8 or tier 10. Because once you reach tier 10, only thing you're using tier 8s are for, or premiums, is to make money, 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 money. And uh, crew training. Because those are pretty good for crew training. Now, be, do keep this in mind, not every tank is uh, necessarily gets that crew XP bonus. No, sir. Uh, you have to, uh, well, I don't know, most of the ones that are, I think almost everyone that's in the shop that's available all the time is a good one, but uh, before you do purchase one that's from the store that looks really cool, Make sure you go uh, go research it and make sure it does give you your crew XP. You know, you want that bonus, that juicy premium tank bonus. But, um, you know, it's, it's a smart thing to do. Now, what's another smart thing to do is I didn't do this, and I really, really regret doing this because my tier 10 American has a really bad crew compared to the other nation's. And uh, the reason for it is I was, wasn't was the very brightest of uh, all the uh, beginners. I was, hell, in the first week, the tutorial wasn't as explanatory as, um, well, it is now. It's really nice now. They pretty much show you everything to do. But uh, before then, I had to stressfully explain to my friends how to uh, do this correctly. And, uh... The camos, camos, uh, camos are cool, buddy, but, uh, you don't accidentally sell the tank when trying to apply camo, I'm sorry. 
But, um, you know, it's all understandable now. But I was, in the first week, I didn't even know Tier 2s existed. But hey, we got here now, up to Tier 10. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's always good to, uh, do the tutorial, follow it thoroughly, so you aren't looking stupid like I did at Tier 1, not knowing that I could aim in and zoom in after that, but uh, hey, we got there. And we also got the Tier 2 after a week. But, um, what is most important to start early is crew training. Definitely, please, at Tier 4 or 5, whatever you choose, it's a good tier to start keeping a crew and moving them up into the ranks and uh, training skills. Now, you must be questioning what what is the glorious skills that I must acquire to dominate and rule the battlefield? Well, I'm glad you asked. Repairs are preferably the best ones for tier, like heavy tanks, you know, all those heavy tanks. They always want repairs because you're going to get tracked a lot and you want to be able to get those tracks up. So you want to learn repairs, track mechanics, put a toolbox on it as equipment, and uh, then pick whatever, well, Six Sense is another good one, Brothers in Arms, and then pick whatever other shitty skill you want. And uh, after that, uh, you must be questioning what what is what is good for a light tank. Well, light tanks, well, let's see. If you like to rush, repairs are good, but I mean, that's not a very wise tactic. You get more XP for spotting people. So if you want to play the light tank the correct way, uh, I guess you could just go for uh, another good skill or Sixth Sense is the first one I would suggest because you always want to know if you're detected or not because these things have low health. So you always want to know if somebody's about to shoot you or they see you. Detected means they're aiming your gun at you. It doesn't mean that, oh, the enemy sees you. No, that means that somebody is literally pointing their gun at you, which means they're about to kill you or take a lot of your health. So Sixth Sense is key to being a light tank master race then you want to drop for camouflage green thumb and uh, brothers in arms and then repairs and track mechanics and then pick whatever the hell you want next uh, situational awareness is probably a good one uh, i don't know um and uh, after that uh, artillery's artillery's no one, well I guess uh, gun rammer would be good to get if it's not the auto-loading French one. And uh, then get vents uh, to put 5% to all crew skills. And uh, tank destroyers, well tank destroyers buddy, they're a lot like light tanks. You want to be hidden, you want that juicy green thumb, you want that camouflage. Repairs, repairs aren't really necessary unless you're a T-95 or another heavy tank destroyer that goes like 8 kilometers an hour, but it gets there. And then uh, Sixth Sense, if I didn't already say that, it's, it's pretty much repetitive. Brothers in Arms and uh, whatever else you want. I guess you could drop for repairs too there, buddy repairs for uh, T-95s. Now, um, it's pretty much all you beginners need to know. Medium tanks, you put whatever you want. It's pretty much the same as what a heavy tank uh, skill loadout would be. You want six ends, uh, repairs, track mechanics, anything that gets you up and running as fast as possible when tracked or anything or all that good stuff. And you want to have the fast fire rates, so you put gun rammers on it, all that stuff, crew ventilations, small liner, and uh, then you're pretty much set there, buddy. So uh, for all you newbies, I welcome you to World of Tanks, and I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I hope it was helpful. And with that said, I'll see you guys out on the battlefield.